Hello everyone, Maverick Mike here. Come on in. I'm gonna be doing an experiment today with resin and plumber's putty, so let's take a look. All right, this is today's experiment. Um, I'm gonna be using plumber's putty to try to seal gaps in a form. I'm doing this in preparation to repair the table that my daughter and I have been working on, our nightstand project. Uh, but I wanna make sure that plumber's putty will actually work to do this. Uh, so as you can see, I just made a little form just out of wood. On top of the wood, I put regular packing tape. Then on top of that to seal it, I just put some silicone. Then around that, on the ends, I built a dam of this plumber's putty. So um, the depth that I'm looking for, ultimate depth, will be about 5 eighths of an inch where that line is. And I want to see if this plumber's putty will actually hold the resin in place and will not stick to it so that I can take it apart later. And that's the whole purpose of this uh, experiment so that we don't mess up the table. So the plumber's putty is soft. So what I did was I wrapped the outside of it with tape on both sides for the dam so it wouldn't move. So these are all my supplies here. That's what we're doing. These are all my supplies. This is just regular plumber's putty. It's nothing special. It's the cheapest one out there. And then we picked up glaze coat from Famawood. And according to the instructions, I should never go more than one eight inch depth at a time. But the experiment is not just to see if the plumber's putty will seal and then release the resin, but if I can pour up to one eight inch and still have it be okay. So that's way above the 1 8 inch recommended by Famawood for their glaze coat. So you can see all my supplies here, the plumber's putty, my form, a little stir stick, the Famawood glaze coat part A and B, the resin and the hardener. I got some acetone over there for cleaning up and I got these little plastic cups. Now these little plastic cups I actually measured from this line on the cup up one quarter inch on both parts A and part B so that I put an equal amount of volume because this one is not by weight, it's by volume is how you do the measurement. So I'm going to put A into A, B into B, and then I'm going to pour B into A according to the instructions. I'll stir that for at least six minutes and then I'll pour that mixture A and B into this other next clean cup and then I'll stir it for another six minutes. Then after that I'm going to pour it in here and set it up so that this is kind of on an edge, a wedge shape so that this part will be deep and this part will be shallow. Um, once again this is just to see if the plumber's putty will seal these gaps, these corners, and whether it will release from the resin or not and if this resin can actually stand going 5 eighths of an inch deep, which is about where that line is. Okay, let's get to it. All right, pouring part A. Let's pour part B. All right, now we're gonna pour B into A and mix for six minutes, but I am gonna definitely edit that out. So the instructions say when you're mixing, you want to avoid power tools and you want to avoid shaking so that you don't introduce air and have bubbles into your mix. Now mix for six minutes. Scraping the sides and the bottom of your mixing container. The instructions also say that this is going to turn milky and that that is normal. Pour A and B into the clean cup. I'm going to try to do it so it doesn't introduce bubbles. All right, now we're going to mix this for six minutes and hopefully the bubbles begin dissipating. All right, so this has been mixed for an additional six minutes and then I let it sit on the bench for a minute or two and you can't leave it too long. You got to pour it pretty quick because you only have 10 to 15 minutes of working time. And since it's 80 degrees out here today, I don't have that much time to play with it. So part of this experiment is to see if this putty will seal or whether it will allow a leak to come out through here. So let's just go ahead and pour this uh, slowly, trying to avoid addition of air bubbles. 
there are still quite a few bubbles in here. We'll try to pour it just on the side so that it runs down. And there's quite a few bubbles coming up with it. I'm wondering if uh, I could put this through something like a coffee filter or something like that that would uh, prevent the bubbles from going down in there. But I'm not gonna experiment with that at this time. But it's a thought, some kind of a very fine filter, like a coffee filter or like a screen or something like that, which will actually remove the bubbles as this is getting poured in. So I'm wondering if they're recommending no more than one eighth of an inch thick depth for this particular resin because of the bubbles. And I don't know the answer to that, but we shall see. The main portion of this experiment is to see if the resin will stick to the plumber's putty and if the plumber's putty will actually form a seal where the resin won't run out every place. Okay, so I've reached my target depth and I'm going to go just a little bit more. I'm going to push the boundaries here. Okay, that's about up to the level of my tape now. So I'm going to let this sit and then in a few minutes I'll come back with a blowtorch and gently and quickly try to torch some of these bubbles out. We may have to do this several times. All right, looks like the bubbles are continuing to rise and that uh, application of heat helps some of them pop. Might have to do this a couple of times. And I don't expect this to harden today. I'll have to come back tomorrow and check it out. But the main thing is I want to see if the resin will release from the plumber's putty when I try to take this thing apart. And that the plumber's putty makes the seal. And right now we don't have any leaks. I put it on top of this plastic bin just so that if it had leaks, well, I wouldn't care about uh, the bin, bottom of the bin getting uh, resin on it. So I think I'll hit this with the torch again. That seems to be helping. Now, I'm not trying to keep this resin pour perfectly clean. I don't care if there's some sawdust and stuff in it. That's not the point of this pour, but um, just trying to see how this is going to work and if it's going to work so that we don't make a mistake and really mess up our table when we try to do this. And the reason I'm trying to do this is because there are so many intricate cuts, angles, and bends to that table that I have to do a pour on that a traditional mold like this wouldn't work. So that's the reason for this experiment. All right, getting back to this experimental mode now. It's been five, six days since I poured this and uh, I'm gonna pull this apart now just to see if the resin is gonna stick to the plumber's putty or not. So let's try this. Tape off the ends. And let's see if this stuff will peel off of the resin here. I'm hoping that it will. All right, so here's how it's peeling off so far. Um, I see resin with just a little bit of a film on it. Maybe it's just the roughness of the surface. Uh, in fact, I can even see my fingerprints <laughs> on it from uh, where I pressed my finger against the putty. It left a fingerprint impression. So that's pretty cool. Let me see if I can dig the rest of it out of the corners where it attaches to the wood. All right, it seems to be coming off pretty good. Uh, well, let me try the other side. This was the shallow side. And as you can see, that's releasing from the resin quite well. So I think that this experiment is successful enough to be able to use plumber's putty as a mold release. And what's nice about it is that it's flexible and you can mold it in and you can stick it to the wood the only downside that I can see having to use this right now, of having to use it, 
is that you have got to support the back side of it somehow. On this one, I happen to use tape. I just stuck the plumber's buddy down here and wrapped some tape around the edge just so that it would have some structure to hold it up. But that's about the only thing that you have to do, I believe, to make this work. All right, I'm going to call this a success. We're going to go ahead and try to use this technique on the nightstand and see how it goes. All right. So here's the uh, resin piece that I pulled out of the mold, and I've just been peeling it off, and I've noticed that the plumber's putty comes off a lot more easily than the silicone that I put into the corners uh, to seal that mold. So that's one additional benefit of the plumber's putty over the silicone is that it's easier to get off. So this is the white silicone, 100% pure silicone, and it comes off, but it's pretty difficult to get off as compared to the plumber's putty, which just very easily peels off. So here's, here's a little remnant of the plumber's putty. It just comes off just that easy. So one benefit is that it comes off more easily than the 100% silicone. So. Anyway, I think that this experiment was a success, and I will be using this on the nightstand. All right, so here's the nightstand, and uh, as you can see, it's partially done already. My daughter began decorating this, um, but then had to leave and go back to the mainland again. So, I'm gonna have to finish up the rest of this table, which is not a problem. I've had a lot of fun working with my daughter on this, and she's learned a lot, and uh, it's gonna be a treasured memory forever, so anyway, what I envision is that at this point on both sides, I need to make a dam that comes up at about a 45 degree angle from here. And then also on the ends, which will be a lot easier by the way, since they're flat, I can use more of a traditional type of form down here in order to make a reservoir for here, here, and here. So I need to make three separate reservoirs to get this done. And I'll give you a close up of what the table looks like over here and see the kind of form that we have to uh, build. It's quite intricate. And that's what I was hoping the plumber's putty would be good for. And uh, as my experiment went well, I think I'm gonna use it on this. So let's try this. All right, here's a close up of what we have to seal. You can see that uh, this has a whole series of steps that have been routed out. And each one is deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And they're not uniform and they're not meant to be uniform. All right, so I just grabbed some scrap pieces of uh, thin wood here and uh, made a basic shape, carved a basic shape out of it. To install roughly like this at an angle. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is put regular plumber's putty on the back side of this over here and try to fill up all of these little gaps so that the resin just doesn't leak out. And uh, that's the plan. We're going to see how well it works. All right, I've worked this uh, plumber's putty in my hands until it's warmed up and uh, became soft and pliable. Now I'm just going to go ahead and try and make a little dam up right behind this uh, brace. Let's see, I can try about this much. Let's see if I need more. I'm trying to press it down into all of these ridges here, all of these cracks. Trying to get a good seal. Okay, try to put this dam in place. About a 45 degree angle or so. And try to move this back in here. And try to get all the edges sealed. First I'm gonna get this top side where I'm happy with it. And then I'll work on the bottom side so this stuff is soft enough that it needs some bracing in the back. So, let's put some clear packing tape on this. Now I'm just gonna try it and build this wall, make it smooth, and make sure all these little gaps have putty stuffed into them. All right, we're gonna run with this one. And now I just have to make one for the lower side and follow the same procedure. All right, here's what the bottom side looks like. 
and I used the Bondo spreader just to try to get this little flat because doing it with my fingers was not flattening everything out. All right, so here we go. Once again, I've mixed it in accordance with the instructions. However, I am not following the instructions as to depth. The maximum depth of this, according to the uh, can, is 1 8 inch. However, this is 5 8 inch deep total. So, we're just gonna try this out and see if it goes, and if it messes up, that's on me, because I did not follow the instructions. if we can remove some bubbles. I have the resin filled up just to the top of the lip and it's just barely starting to come over the lip. So what I'm gonna do afterwards when everything is said and done and all the pores are done, is come back and sand and we'll do a final coat on top of everything. I can't do a final coat on this right now because I got all this tape and all this stuff holding this stuff together, so. All right, here's the underside and I do not see any evidence of leakage, so the uh, plumber's buddy seems to be holding nicely at this point. All right, here we are at the top side, and I do not see any evidence of leaking over here, so looks like the top side is holding. <laughs> 